Right now, the only way that people get good at owning an aquarium is by killing a lot of things, which is terrible for a lot of reasons. But one of the big reasons is that it's not just that you're killing fish, it's that you're killing your fish. And that sucks. Um, and I, there's a stat that I heard that seems eminently plausible that one out of 10 people who join this hobby are still in it 18 months later. Um, and it's our thesis that if everyone who's joined this hobby started with a fish bit, well, we can make that number two out of every 10, three out of it every 10. And that's a huge difference on this. Making it easier and more accessible for people, that's super powerful and super valuable because the hobby is awesome. A beautiful tank is universally amazing, um, but people are upset because stuff dies, because it's hard work, because it's expensive. And so making it a little bit easier on, on different ways keeps this hobby growing. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm one of the founders of FishBit, and you know we're just trying to make it really easy to own an aquarium. Hey, I'm Brack. I'm one of the co-founders of FishBit, uh, mainly focusing on helping lead our engineering effort. I've been into aquariums my whole life. Uh, I was born and raised in Miami, which I like to joke that it has a high aquarium per capita for a city, um, and around. You know, eighth or ninth grade, my father and me got a tank so that we could have a hobby together. Um, and that kind of just was the foot in the door and I went all the way down the rabbit hole. So by the time I was graduating high school, um, my first job was at a local fish store. Um, I was going in on the weekends and helping at, at a place called Aquarium Mart in Miami. And um, I was actually taking fish home rather than a salary. Um, that was really how crazy I got. And then I went to college and I'd come home and the tank wasn't doing so great. And after I think the first year, you know, the tank kind of had just died because, um, and I'm throwing him under the bus here, my dad didn't really know how to take care of the tank. Um, and that was, that was it for the hobby for a few years. I, I graduated college and I was working in Chicago as a software developer when I wanted to play with hardware. And so, you know, I wanted, I've been wanting to build Fishbit for basically since I was 10 years old. And I finally had an opportunity to build it um, and it was kind of for me at first, and this re crazy thing happened, which was really smart people started saying, that's really awesome, I, I want one of those. And so we started thinking, you know, maybe we should see if we could do this as more than just, you know, my own personal fish bit. So Nathan, uh, what are you doing? Setting up a fish tank. What well, part of the fish tank? The return pump. What exactly are you doing? All these tubes? Making chemistry and stuff, and science and magic and happiness. Don't explode stuff, Nathan. Fishbit has been a really awesome project to work on. Um, it's, you know, as most of you know, you know, between an aquarium monitor and a controller, there's a lot of uh, engineering problems that have to be solved. And what's made it a lot of fun is both the highs and the lows. Um, we've come a long way, you know, when we've been iterating over our prototypes. Uh, in the beginning, we were testing with some customers like Chris and Ron with just alpha prototypes. And we'd have Salinity work um, for about a week and then stop working for a few days and really had to get in there and investigate why we were having signal integrity issues, why units were working in our lab but then not in the field. And over many iterations, we've been able to learn and perfect our boards. Now we have, you know, we're getting the best performance we can out of our probes. We're getting highly accurate readings. And that's the goal of Fishbit to cost effectively bring high quality aquarium monitoring and control to everybody. Bubbles. Well, the bubbles on the tank, I mean. Over the last two years, we've done dozens of iterations on Fishbit. Um, when we started, we essentially had an Arduino microcontroller that was great for you know one person's fish tank. Um, but it's a very different thing to build something once for yourself than it is to build something 50 or 100 times, and that's also 
very different from something that you can build thousands of times and have other people, manufacturers, build them. And so you can do it efficiently and in a cost-effective way. Um, and a lot of what we're doing means, you know, we just, you know, we're doing incremental steps along the way. And so we went from our Arduinos to our own PCBs. I think we're now on our fourth uh, printed circuit board. Um, and it's these kind of electronics that we went from a hobbyist level to what you'd buy out of a Best Buy. And sure, sometimes we're working out of our home or we're working out of a great office like Highway 1. Um, but the reality is we're following processes that billion dollar companies are using. Uh, and so our experience, Brack's experience at JDSU for the last 10 years, Garrett's experience at IDEO, um, we're taking all of these things and we're coming up with a, a really efficient way as a startup to do these things. Uh, and you look at these massive corporations, tons of them started in garages and we're, you know, we're trying to make our own version of that process. Hey Brack, what's going on here? Uh, I'm using a mill way outside of regulation. Where are we? Uh, make it H1. Nate and I started getting really serious about Fishbit and wanted to go full time. And Highway 1 gave us a space to work and so came out here to San Francisco, Nate from Chicago, I drove all the way across the country from DC to here. Um, and this is really where we first set up our first shop uh, to get all of the work going. When we talk about how we came from Chicago and DC to San Francisco and really took this on full time. Uh, a big part of that was because a group of investors uh, called Highway One, which is a hardware accelerator, um, gave us the opportunity and the original seed funding that we needed to take Fishbit, you know, from a shoebox of prototypes to kind of the next level. My name is Marcus Gosling. I'm the design lead at the Highway One Hardware Startup Accelerator. So Highway One is a hardware startup accelerator. And so, first of all, I think it's useful to explain what an accelerator is. So all the people who work here, they know quite a lot about how to start up companies. But instead of doing our own company, what we do is we invest in a, in a number of companies and help them be successful. And so we're an accelerator that focuses on hardware startups. Those are the companies making stuff that actually makes a noise when you drop it on the ground, rather than iPhone apps or websites. So we're at Highway 1. It's a hardware accelerator that takes you from prototype to production. Uh, and so essentially, these guys were our first investors, um, and they really legitimized us as a company. This was really a side project until they asked us to come join their program. Uh, and it's been really wonderful. They, you know, We have all these access to these tools that we get to use um, on top of the investment that they gave us. And they also have staff on hand to help us out um, if we come across any problems. What's going on, Breck? Uh, well, transferring power wires wirelessly, and uh, we're gonna max it out then until this puppy burns. Should we have an ex fire extinguisher handy? Um, uh, probably. Look at all that power being transferred. More power. We're at 10 volts now, going into it. This coils, I mean, we're not gonna get much higher than somewhere between 2.5 and 3 amps. Oh, there it goes, it just spiked three amps, and no power, eh, it's smoking. Whew. I don't see any smoke. All right, let's do it again then. More smoke. Here you go, I'll just ramp it up real quick. Oh, yep, see that smoke? Yep, all right, I'm gonna quit burning it. <laughs> <laughs> Goof. That's E. When it came to doing more than just making our product work, to making a product that customers are going to love to hold and look at and have in their aquarium, Marcus Gosling was there to help us understand what great design was around a hardware product and what the user really needs. He was helping us take a product that was good to great. So twice a year we take in about 10 teams to help them be successful. And it was probably late 2015 when we first started talking to the Fishbit guys. And we, we liked uh, what they were doing because they were a company that was using sensors to try and you know, manage something better, in this case um, fish tanks and potentially further along hydroponics. But what we also really liked about them was that they were very passionate about fish and they knew the, the community of people that cared about fish that had saltwater tanks and so you got a sense that they really liked going out and hanging out with people that loved aquariums and so they were much more likely to build a product that those people would really use every day. That's not always true of every hardware startup I meet. A lot of hardware entrepreneurs love the idea of making stuff, being in the lab with a soldering iron, and they're almost allergic to going out and meeting the customers that they're building product for. And that wasn't the case with Nate and the team. They went, every weekend they were, it seemed like they were going off to 
uh, different fish events and coming back with cool stories about people they met and the feedback they were getting on the product that they were building. My name is Nathan Levine and I'm working on Fishbit, which is the simplest aquarium monitor and controller. Uh, so inside the tank we have our monitor, which is tracking pH, salinity and temperature. And it's powered inductively, which means there's no wires going into the tank. Uh, and then the other half of it is the Fishbit controller. Uh, and with the controller, we can control third-party systems. One of the things that is really important for us as a company is that we're always getting, you know, it's getting out of the building and talking to our customers because it's really easy to build something just for us. And then we find out that that's kind of what everybody wants, but it's not really what everybody wants. Uh, and you know, this hobby is so diverse and there's so many people doing things in so many different ways that if we didn't do our job and get out and talk to as many people as we can, we just wouldn't be the building the right product and having the right company behind it. Uh, and so we've really ingrained ourselves in you know, the whole aquarium community from massive forums like Reef Central all the way down to our local, you know, our local group. It's the Bay Area Reefers in, in San Francisco. I'm, I'm active in Miami, I'm active in Chicago. You know, from individual hobbyists to groups to fish store owners. Let's take, for example, Chris Moore. He's part of the Bay Area Reefers here in San Francisco. And he's got a tank that is to die for. I mean, he's got a 300 display that it's what dreams are made of, really. And he's been part of this process from the beginning. Since we moved out to San Francisco 18 months ago, you know, we've been calling him periodically all the time. He, and he gives us unbelievable advice um, that we're able to take back to the drawing board when we start looking at the future of Fishbit, how we're going to change the app, how we're, what we need to include in the hardware. You know, at every part of the way, we're considering feedback from users. Hi, I'm Chris Moore. I'm here in Pacifica, California with my 300 gallon uh, SPS and LPS reef tank. I'm hanging out with the guys from Fishbit today. They just came by to check out the tank. Uh, so how did I get to know the guys from Fishbit? Um, I belong to a local reefing club called Bay Area Reefers here in the Bay Area of California. Uh, it's a great group of people and we do, every once in a while we do tank tours and we go to each other's houses and we uh, check out each other's tanks, which if you're a fish geek that's pretty much the best thing ever. Alex and Nate came by, they were with Fishbit and uh, saw my tank and uh, they had a lot of questions and I think that's great with anybody that's getting into the hobby. You gotta get together with somebody that kinda knows what's going on. It's been through all the bad things that can happen and can kinda steer you in the right direction. So uh, ever since then they've been kinda contacting me on and off and uh, asking me different things, different opinions about Fishbit, things that could make it better. And uh, it's been great to get to know them. We've had a lot of good times. So my tank has been a long time coming. I've been in the hobby for about 20 years now. I've started with all kinds of different tanks. I've had Fowler's tanks and just regular LPS and softies kind of tanks, which is where we all kind of start. Um, this tank came when I just happened to come into a, a little bit of money, more than I normally would have had, and uh, I got kind of lucky. They messed up my taxes for a couple of years and they ended up having to pay me back a whole bunch of stuff. So I got excited and blew it all on this thing. Um, the vision for my tank uh, really came from scuba diving. I'm a big diver and I just, the reefs in the wild are just kind of phenomenal and I love to watch the fish interact with the reef. So a lot of what I wanted to do was something a little different you don't see a lot of, which is really tall kind of spires and things in the tank. Um, so I spent a lot of time on the aquascape. I'm just thinking about how the corals might grow um, and it's ever changing. Um, I just I just changed it again, and uh, I'm really excited about how it's turned out. Um, I like to watch the fish interact, uh, see how they're doing. If they start getting agitated, uh, you know, sometimes you got to change some things up. So uh, tanks come a long way. Um, I love all kinds of corals. So this is a very mixed reef. Uh, I have a lot of chalice corals and 
Chalice seem to do really well in this tank and I'm very lucky. I have some real beautiful specimens and uh, it's been a pleasure to watch them grow. SPS are pretty exciting. I think anybody that's into it is just like me and they're addicted beyond belief, but uh, they're also extremely challenging. Uh, they come with a lot of issues that uh, you got to learn about along the way and I've had to learn just like everybody else and it's uh, it's been some heartbreaks and, and some really neat neat times and right now is a really neat time so the tank's doing really good. Uh, LPS I, I fell in love with years and years ago because you just can't beat the color that you can get out of these LPS and the movement uh, is just gorgeous with the flow. Uh, so it's really important to me to see the entire reef kind of working together. Uh, I'm also really pretty passionate about uh, invertebrates. Uh, I always try to have a couple urchins on hand and you know they live a couple years sometimes three or four uh, and so you might have to replace them every once in a while but uh, it's kind of fun to have shrimp and crabs and starfish and urchins in the tank at all times and just kind of checking it out. Uh, you can watch this thing for hours and, and never be bored. <laughs> So some of the more technical aspects on the tank, I, I run all LED uh, lighting system on this. Uh, I run Kessels primarily. I have five Kessel Narrow A350s is what I started with. And then now I also have some 360s mixed in. Um, a couple of my A350s have been going for over three years now and uh, I haven't had any problems with them. They've been pretty impressive lighting. The filtration system, I have a 160 gallon sump that sits underneath the tank. Um, it's in three chambers. I have about a 75 gallon section that I use as a refugium. I also call it jail because uh, I have a couple fish down there that uh, eat coral and uh, I've had them for years and years and I couldn't give them up. I have a beautiful lemon peel angel down there and I have another clownfish. Um, <clears throat> the clownfish that's in this tank I've had for 14 years and she's pretty pretty special to me. She's my favorite fish. But uh, the other clown I'd had about seven years in a different tank and were I to add them together one of them would come out the winter and that's not good. So <laughs> I, he now resides in jail. He's got a couple beautiful anemones down there and uh, <clears throat> they seem to like it. They have a big section to live in. Um, I designed this tank through a wall because I want it to be as quiet as possible. It's still got a little bit of a hum in here, but uh, for this big of a tank, I'm actually pretty pleased with the noise amount. So I just want to thank the guys from Fishbit, uh, especially Nate and Alex. They've been really cool uh, getting to know them, and uh, they've asked a lot of questions. Uh, I appreciate how much work they've put into not just the product, but trying to learn about the hobby as much as they possibly can, because that's important to me, that people that are in this hobby are kind of putting putting the effort in to make sure that the fish are healthy, that the coral are healthy, and uh, I think that's the whole concept behind what they're trying to do, and I uh, wish them the best. Uh, I, I think they can do it, and I'm pretty impressed with what they've done so far, so uh, good luck to them, and I'll certainly have one in my tank uh, when they get it all ready to go, so uh, good luck, guys. So one of the things that we've done that I think is very different than a lot of hardware companies is about 13 months ago, we actually launched a public beta. So we, we went on Kickstarter and we said we have 30 units. You know, we weren't ready to sell a production unit because we still needed to learn and really grow the product into the evolution that it's become. Uh, and so over the last 13 months, we were doing a lot of R&D. Uh, we got 50 units actually out in the wild, uh, 30 plus you know some bloggers plus some influencers here in San Francisco, and a big part of that was so that when we launched the real production version, it's not version one. The reality is it's actually version 1.5, version two, because we've already done all the R and D. Then we've learned all these things that people are having in the field, not just on a technical standpoint, but also on a usability standpoint, on an experience of the app, on what they wish it could have done, or what was something they thought was cool, but it turns out they didn't use, so that we can pare down and make really the right version right away. And so we're not coming out with kind of this like, oh, I think this is gonna be a cool new product. We've already done all of that hard work, and we've really taken in and appreciated all of the stuff that our beta users are coming, good and bad, so that this version is the right version. One of our beta users is Jim Ruga. He's been in the hobby for 30 years. He is a hardcore reefer. He's had all kinds of tanks, from small ones to big ones, and he's gone through every piece of hardware that can go on an aquarium. Uh, the result of which, he has a gorgeous tank. Um, but having his advice, because he's seen so many things, um, because he's 
you know, he really knows what he's talking about has been fundamental for us to build Fishbit the right way. Hi, I'm Jim and I'm a Fishbit beta tester. So it's actually kind of cool. So a couple of things that I like about the fish bit is, is it doesn't have all the ugly probes exposed, right? It's, it's nice and in the tank. Um, the interesting thing is um, I've tried a number of different monitors, even, even some of the, the more expensive stuff off the shelf and setting up alerts and, and stuff. And the fish bit just, it just works. It's just integrated in, right? I always get the notifications on the phone. Um, if something's wrong, um, actually the out of the box notifications, you do have to adjust a little bit to your tank because they're, they're set sort of like at, at premium or at, at not premium at, uh, known average levels. So you have to adjust it. You have to know your tank well enough to adjust your settings on your fish bit to match what your normal day night cycles are and your normal highs and lows on pHs and salinity. But um, after setting it, like I said, it just works. Um, I've tried a number of other things. Some, some of the other sensors, like the all-in-one sensors, um, they're noisy, they're off, the readings are not right, right? At least the fish bit is, is directly comparable to what I've used with just straight out of the box Milwaukee probes. Um, and um, the nice thing, like I said, the, the Milwaukee's are are great and you attach them to your controller of, of, of choice um, but then you have to clean them and everything and the fish bits just all nice and compact and I expect eventually I'll have to clean the fish bit too but I opened mine up and you know the only things I found in there after like a couple of months of use um, was uh, a few copepods right and some traces of a few encrusting worms but not anything like um, my my exposed monitors that I have attached to my controller, and those things are just always encrusted with stuff, and they have sponges growing on them, or they have um, coralline algae growing on them, and I have to clean them all the time, right? So the fish bits seems more maintenance free. Um, being kind of a reef techie, I don't trust anything, right? So I let it have its burn-in period, and so. Now we'll see, we'll see how it actually does in a longer term test over the course of the next year as this tank grows out. It's a 150 gallon tank with an overflow sump built into the bat. I had it custom made. It actually connects to a refugium, a 30 gallon refugium, which is actually placed above the tank. The water overflows out the back of the tank, uh, across the living room and out to a chiller and then back into the living room and um, is pumped up through the refugium where it, where it flows back into the tank. Specifically, I built it to grow corals. It's kind of a display tank. I experiment a lot, and so you can see, kind of in the background, you can see um, I've got some corals that are actually suspended in mid-flow, just to see what happens. I would guess, at the moment, there's about 50 different species of coral in there, and then hitchhikers. I have no idea what, what hitchhiking corals are in there. There's uh, I've gotten all sorts of things, um, all sorts of bryozoans and sponges and different things that are hitchhikers in there. Bunch of fish, there's like 30 fish in the whole system somewhere. Um, I don't know where. <laughs> so the lights, I had the lighting system made. I've tried a number of different things. I actually currently am running a set of Ecotech Radions with three Kessels behind it. They're in a custom fixture that I had made at CA Reef Company. I do run two Ecotech MP40s in the back. On either side of the tank, I actually do have two gyres, max spec gyres. Um, I run them pretty much full blast. So the distance from the top to the tank to the center is where they're aimed, and they go pretty much in opposite directions. So Fishbit, from a maintenance perspective, how has it helped? The routine of maintenance I do on the tank is pretty regular. A lot of the refinements I'm making over time. So it's kind of crucial to me for two aspects. One is the salinity, right? That salinity goes through normal daily cycles because of evaporation. And I want to keep that salinity as rock solid as possible because if it, if it varies by more than four or five parts per million, the corals get really unhappy. You get die-off spots in, in various spots in the corals. 
And the other reason is because I have a protein skimmer in the back. And so the protein skimmer is super sensitive to water level. Because it's in the overflow sump at the back, the water level is not constant. If I had a refugium on the floor or an overflow tank on the floor, um, that would be managed as a constant water flow level. Um, this is actually different because the water flow in the back actually goes up and down as the water in the tank rises. So something as little as about half a gallon of water makes a huge difference in the amount of skimmate you get. So I can actually see those changes by looking at the readings drawn in the past few minutes um, from the fish bit. And if they actually go outside of a certain threshold for any single reading, I can actually have an alert set and I know that I have to have it topped off. Ultimately, I want, to t I want to tie that into a top off monitor. As an engineer coming into this, it's been really neat. You know, Nate introduced me to the whole aquarium community and it's amazing how much people know. They know a ton about what it takes to keep your aquarium, whether it's the biology of the fish inside, the chemistry of the water, and also all of the equipment that's going around their tank. I mean, it's an incredibly savvy group of hobbyists. And so it's exciting to design for people because there's so much input you can get on really good insights on just here's what my problems are. Um, and so it is awesome, you know, when people call us and say, like, finally a device, like, proud to put in my tank because it's so beautiful, or this was really easy to set up. But, you know, going even further than that and just saying, I, I, I love the calls we get that's not even just about the product. I think, you know, what Fishbit is really all about is when we get the calls and just say, my tank is doing better because I have a Fishbit in it. You know, it, it's not just because the screen was pretty or it took, you know, 10 seconds to do this. Um, it was really intuitive, and that's all great, and that's what we want design the product to be. But when we get calls and people are telling us that just how much more they're enjoying taking care of the tank, you know, with Fishbit being a part of it, or that Fishbit helped them solve a problem, that's really what we want to be giving to people. Exactly. That's like that's it in a nutshell for me. It's like straight up, we're going to make this beautiful. This is going to match the beauty of your tank, no doubt about it. But that's table stakes. The whole purpose is. This makes my tank better. This makes me better. That's the cloud. So just wait a second and see if it starts getting your readings. Hello! <laughs> Hello from Fish Beat! <laughs> what just happened, Brack? Fish Beat works. That's it? We're done? We're done! What are you guys monitoring from the fish pit boards for the first time? Are we or what are we? What are you? pH. We're gonna monitor pH. For which, how many times have you done that before? Zero with the new beta boards. Oh first time for everything. I do see myself owning a saltwater aquarium at some point in my life. I'm, I don't have a room in my house in reserve for it, but I'm, I'm like, I'm after hanging out with these guys. Yeah, I got really intrigued by the whole thing. They're so the, the, when they put it in the in the environment with the the thing that really I thought was interesting was not the fish. It was the is all the corals and everything. And I don't think a lot of people realize how neat those those creatures. I don't even know if the creatures are plants. That's part of the, what makes them amazing. But that stuff, like I would I would imagine having a tank filled with corals with some fish. You know, that would be really great to have.